haven't really scraped the surface on my experience, but I do think that I would never want someone else to feel that way. And I would never want someone else to be making those sort of plans. And I would never want someone else to not be believed. So if, if me voicing what I have um, overcome will save someone or asks or encourage someone in their life to really genuinely check in on them and not assume that the appearance is good so everything's okay, then that's worth it. I'll, I'll take a hit for that. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry are sharing insight into their parenting lives and personal struggles in the hopes of helping others. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex opened up about the fears they have for their children's online safety in a rare joint interview for CBS Sunday Morning. Speaking with host Jane Pauley, the couple explained how they're taking steps to shield five-year-old son Archie and three-year-old daughter Lilibet from negative content and its harmful impact. Our kids are young, they're three and five. They're amazing. But all you want to do as parents is protect them. And so as we can see what's happening in the online space, we know that there's a lot of work to be done there and we're just happy to be able to be a part of well, you change for good. Well, you hope when your children ask for help, someone you know, is, is there to, to give it, uh, you know, if you not know, to... If you know how to help. If, mm. well, thank you. Megan and Harry have long spoken out against online bullying and continue advocating for mental health awareness. And they're now offering support through their new venture, The Parents Network, which brings together those who have lost children as a result of social media. I think you have to start somewhere. I think the simplest mm. thing that anyone watching this or anyone who's able to make change, to look at it through the lens of, what if it was my daughter? What if it was my son? My son or my daughter who comes home, who are joyful, who I love, and one day, right under my roof, our entire lives change because of something that was completely out of our control. And if you look at it through the lens as a parent, there is no way to see that any other way than to try to find a solution. Harry went on to share why he believes even the most attentive moms and dads are at risk of missing major warning signs in their kids. And that's, I think, one of the scariest things that we've learned over the course of the last 15, 17 years that social media's been around, and more so recently, is the fact that it could happen to absolutely anybody. I mean, we always talk about, in the olden days, if your kids were under your roof, you knew what they were up to. At least they were safe, right? <laughs> And now they can be in the next door room on a tablet or on a phone and can be going down these rabbit holes. And, and before you know it, within 24 hours, they could be taking their life. Mm -hmm. at, th at this point, we've got to the stage where almost every parent needs to be a first responder. And even the best first responders in the world wouldn't be able to tell the signs of possible suicide. Like, that, that is the terrifying piece of this. Megan and Harry's latest sit-down is their first TV interview together since their bombshell conversation with Oprah Winfrey in 2021, in which the Duchess opened up about her own past struggle with thoughts of self-harm. Look, I was really ashamed to say it at the time and ashamed to have to admit it to Harry especially um, because I know how much loss he suffered. Mm -hmm. But I knew that if I didn't say it, that I would do it. And I, I just didn't, I just didn't want to be alive anymore. The mom of two is now reflecting on that experience and why it makes her and Harry's mission that much more meaningful, noting that she still has much more to uncover. You had uh, an, an experience that connects you to these, these families. And I see you touch your husband's <laughs> hand in just the way I knew uh, that you would be looking after each other if I went places. But mm. the connection that you have with people is they know you, you had suffered too, personally. Contemplating killing yourself is what suicidal ideation was. And I'm, I'm dancing around this because I can see you're uncomfortable with my even, even going there. Do you? I understand why you are, though. I wasn't expecting it, but I understand why you are. Because there is a, a through line, I think. And when you've been through any level of pain or trauma, I believe part of our healing journey, certainly part of mine, is being able to be really open about it. And I you know, haven't really scraped the surface on my experience, but I do think that 
I would never want someone else to feel that way. And I would never want someone else to be making those sort of plans. And I would never want someone else to not be believed. So if, if me voicing what I have um, overcome will save someone or asks or encourage someone in their life to really genuinely check in on them and not assume that the appearance is good so everything's okay, then that's worth it. I'll, I'll take a hit for that. In addition to sitting down for their Sunday morning chat, Megan and Harry also met with the Parents Network Charter members in honor of its launch, and the group explained why they're forming this community to channel their grief through an important public service. We're gonna stop expecting you to be done with your grief in a year. We're gonna stop um, telling you that we're tired of hearing the stories of internet harm. Like, we will say your kid's name over and over again because they existed and they mattered, and that we know that it wasn't your fault. That's it, right? It wasn't your fault. This happened to you, and now we as a community get to create something with you. Knowing that we're helping others, and, and even if that saves one kid and one family's heartache, that's enough. Why would you do this? Why would you do this? The simple answer is so others don't have to live what we've lived and will continue to live. I don't expect anything from anyone. This is just a labor of love in honor of my son and all the other children that have lost their lives to fentanyl. This is for the mother who cannot get out of bed, for the dad that won't leave his house. I stand here for them too. I hope that one day when it's my turn to go home, I'll see my son and he'll, he'll tell me, good job, mama. Meghan and Harry's efforts come amid the prince's continued legal battle with the British media, which he said stems from not only his goal to keep Meghan and his children safe, but also the tragic death of his mother, Princess Diana, who passed away in a 1997 Paris car accident while being chased by paparazzi. In the recent ITV documentary, Tabloids on Trial, Harry explained why he's holding the fight so close to his heart. Look at what has happened in the last four years to me, my wife, and my family, right? So that was a very hard decision for me to make, which is how, how bad is it going to get? Some people would say that, that, you know, you're taking on these, these high-profile battles, but that actually attracts more attention onto you. There is more than enough <laughs> attention on me and my wife anyway. There was, they pushed me too far. It got to a point where you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. I don't think there's anybody else in the world that is better suited and placed to be able to see this through than myself. It's still dangerous, and all it takes is one lone actor, one person who reads this stuff, to act on what they have read. And whether it's a knife or acid, whatever it is, and these are things that are genuine concern for me. It's one of the reasons why I won't bring my wife back to this country.